What's going on, Giants fans? Hope you had a great weekend. And we've got a loaded show today. The Giants, they have made three cuts. We're going to break that down. There's an update on Aziz Ojolari. You might already know about it. We're also going to go through the Giants injury report because it is extremely lengthy. And then I'll give you my takeaways from Sunday and Monday's Giants training camp practice. And it did not look good for the offense in Daniel Jones. Welcome in to New York Giants Now by Chat Sports. I'm your host, Marshall Green. In today's show, we're going to break down everything surrounding the New York football Giants. And you can stay up to date on everything under the sun that relates to the Giants by giving me a follow on Twitter at Marshall Green underscore. I will follow back everybody that follows me from today's show. Just mention me or send me a DM letting me know that you came from this video. But let's get right to it. Let's look at the three guys the Giants have cut and will no longer be on this roster. The Giants, they were at 90 players before this. Now they're at 87. They're going to have to cut two more. You got to get to 85 players by Tuesday afternoon. They cut Michael Jaquette, who was the guy they brought in a couple of weeks before training camp started. I thought he was going to make this roster because he's a veteran and we needed DB help, but he just did not play that good. He started training camp kind of high in the depth chart and then continued to work his way the way you don't want to work in a, in a depth chart. Josh Revis also gets cut. You know, it's going to be tough to make this roster as a depth piece on the interior offensive line. And then Gerard Wilson, the safety that the Giants cut or signed a couple of weeks ago, also gets cut. When the Giants cut two more players, which is going to be tomorrow because that's the deadline, we're going to get you guys a video as soon as possible. So subscribe and turn on your notifications so you can stay up to date on everything surrounding the New York football Giants. When they make those two cuts, we're going to get you guys a video ASAP. And also, we're going to be going live on the channel once again for a watch party this Sunday against the Cincinnati Bengals. It was a lot of fun last week against the New England Patriots. I mean, every time you beat the Patriots as a Giants team, it is always fun. But subscribe, turn your notifications on, and join us this Sunday for week two of the preseason and edition number two of a Giants watch party. We talked about Aziz Ojolari off the top of the show, but let's break it down. He is off the pup list, and he got put on the pup list the day before Giants training camp opened. There was a hamstring injury that he suffered when he was training and getting in shape for camp. They held him out. They were being cautious. They said it wasn't too serious, just kind of a precautionary move, and he's back, and I can't wait to see him play this weekend against the Bengals. It sounds like the Giants, all of their starters that are healthy, will play again, and good thing for the Giants because Aziz Ojolari is a damn good football player. Last year as a rookie, eight sacks. He joins a great and very talented defensive line, in my opinion. I think it's one of the best position groups on this team. Highlighted by Kayvon Thibodeau, Leonard Williams, Dexter Lawrence, and Aziz Ojolari. That's four pieces that you can build around, and I can't wait to see them all on the field. Thibodeau on one side, Ojolari on, the another, on another, and Leonard Williams and Dexter Lawrence in the middle providing the beef. If you're excited that Aziz Ojolari is back, not on the pup list anymore. He's going to be wearing that blue jersey this Sunday. If you're excited to see him play or just happy that he's no longer injured, I want you to type 51 in the comments section. I'm expecting a big sophomore season from Aziz. Hopefully he tops eight sacks like he did as a rookie. But show him some love. Type 51 in the comments right now. Started the show with some good news, you know, some happy injury news that Aziz Ojolari passed a physical and he's not on the pup list anymore. Here's some bad news. The Giants had 19 players not practice on Monday. Some weren't at practice. Some were on the side working on drills. Look at the, let's look at the five guys that we've talked about a couple, of, a couple of times on this show that haven't been at practice. Real Ricky Seals-Jones, he hasn't practiced one time at Giants training camp. The reasons are unknown. The media is not talking about it. And Brian Dable is not talking about it. I had a lot of expectations for Ricky Seals-Jones, but it is just a huge question mark as to why he has not been practicing. Shane Lemieux is still dealing with that foot and toe injury that he suffered in the preseason game against the Patriots. Blake Martinez did not participate. I bet it's just an off day working back from that ACL tear 
Ellerson Smith, he hurt his ankle on Sunday's practice in a one-on-one -on -one pass rush drill. He did not practice today. And Jihad Ward also left Sunday's practice with an undisclosed injury. These six guys, and we'll get to some more, were on the side at practice. No official injury, or we don't know what the injury was, but they were all working on the side. That's Matt Breida, Gary Brightwell, who looked really good in the Giants' first preseason game. Canarius Tony. Another injury, and it sounds like he is not going to practice at all this week. That's what Brian Dable said on Sunday. That's big news. Hopefully, you know, it's just a precautionary thing. He did have that off-season knee surgery. We need number 89 on the field. He's really our most talented offensive player. We need him to play big and actually play and be healthy. Darius Slayton, David Sills, and Austin Prowell also worked on the side, as well as John Feliciano, who has had a couple – Missed practices due to heat exhaustion. Joshua Azudu is still nursing that injury. Jamil Douglas and Cordell Flott both left the preseason game this past Thursday. Flott's dealing with that groin injury. Hopefully he can get back. Radarius Williams is still working back from last season's ACL. Leonard Williams and Adore Jackson also did not practice. Kind of seemed like a, just like some load management for those guys. Not too serious for either of them. Just those are two guys the Giants cannot afford to play without. So they're putting them in bubble wrap, and that's what you like to see. But what you don't like to see is the injuries. And they never stop for the New York football Giants. I saw a stat on Twitter, could be true, could not be true, that the Giants have had the most players go on injured reserve in the NFL since 2010. And that's a problem. It's a recurring theme for the Giants. The injuries don't stop, but that's a part of the game. You got to be durable, and you got to be deep. And this Giants team, I'm not sure if they're either of those. But if you just hate injuries, I want you to just type F injuries in the comment section. It just seems like every year injuries pop up. It was Aziz Ojolari, then it was Shane Lemieux, and now it just keeps on going. If you're tired of them or if you just hate the injuries that always happen to the Giants, I want you to type F injuries in the comments right now. Let's talk about Daniel Jones and the passing offense. Because on Sunday, as well as Monday, the offense and Daniel Jones did not look good. The passing offense continues to struggle during practice, and maybe they're just going up against the best defense in the NFL, led by Wink Martindale. Just kidding. That's not the case. This offense has looked bad, and it kind of carried over a little bit into the game on Thursday. Connor Hughes, who covers the Giants, he said this, the first three plays of Giants practice, Barkley run for no gain, a false start, Daniel Jones fumbled the snap, Jones runs for no gain, and then Dexter Lawrence sacked uh, Daniel Jones. The offense has struggled. That's been noted. That's been talked about. I also saw this tweet from Dan Duggan, which I thought was pretty, pretty newsworthy, I would say. He said, just a brutal day for the Giants offense. This was on Sunday. He said, camp stats are what they are. But I had Daniel Jones at 6 of 19 with two interceptions by Adore Jackson and Darnay Holmes. Jones also had to scramble a handful of times because of protection issues. The pass game has looked bad, and it starts up front. The Giants' pass blocking hasn't been so good. The running run blocking has looked good. We'll break that down in a second. But they also didn't look good in the two-minute drill. Connor Hughes said they started with a screen to Robinson, a bad pass to Colin Johnson, a, J a J. Holmes sack, a screen to Robinson, another interception by Darnay Holmes, a Barkley run, and a Barkley run. The offense does not look good. We talked about it. They could only muster up three points as a starting unit against the New England Patriots number two. I'm officially worried. I'm losing confidence in this passing offense as the practices go by. I see these clips of Daniel Jones. He just doesn't look good. He doesn't look confident. He doesn't trust his arm. There was a play in the preseason game where he had Colin Johnson wide open, streaking down the left sideline. It was a cover two fade. The defense was in cover two. And yes, you're supposed to throw the whole shot. And he just didn't throw it. I don't know if he didn't see it. I don't know if he doesn't trust himself. Either way, that is a problem, and you can't have your quarterback missing easy gimmies like that in the NFL. You got to take the points that are given to you, and I'm just not sure if I trust Daniel Jones to be that guy. I'm not out on him, but I am done making excuses for Daniel Jones. It's year four. It's time for him to overcome the shitty circumstances that have been placed on his foot at his feet because that's what good quarterbacks in the NFL do. They raise the play of others, and they make others around them better. But I want to I want to poll you guys and see where you stand on this. What is your confidence in this offense? Scale it from 1 to 10. 1 being you're not confident at all, 10 
or yeah, one being you're not confident at all, 10 being you're really confident, I would say maybe a three or a four. I'm not really all that confident, but I want to hear from you in the comments section. Let me know what you're thinking. Also, Giants fans, shout out to Fanatics because they are hooking you up with a great deal. You can get not one, but two Giants t-shirts for $29.99. All you got to do is go to chatsports.com slash Giants 2-pack. That's chatsports.com slash Giants 2-pack and get yourself hooked up with two t-shirts for as low as $29.99. 99 that link will be in the comments and description of today's show the deal won't last forever so get your hands on these two sick shirts today the pass offensive line the pass blocking in the pass game has not looked good for the giants in training camp but the run offense and the run blocking has looked really really good saquon in the run game continues to look good in practice and that makes some sense it's sometimes easier to get on track faster than you normally would when you're trying to run the football, just block the man ahead of you and hit the hole. Whereas passing offense is a little bit more complex. You got to deal with the pressures. Daniel Jones has to read the play. He has to make the throw. He has to do all the things. Running the ball, though, has been good for the New York Giants. Saquon Barkley busted off a long run today in 11-on-11s. 11 Madeline Burke, who covers the Giants, said Saquon just threw on the afterburners after a long TD in 11-on-11 11 drills. 11. That's what you like to see. Saquon has looked good. He trusts himself. He trusts his knee. I think this is the first time he has been completely healthy since his second year in the NFL. Dan Duggan also did talk about Kenny Galladay, though, and I want to talk about that. He said Kenny Galladay's drop in the, drop in the preseason opener was egregious, but more concerning is how little production he has daily in practice. He had two targets today, both on end zone fades versus Aaron Robinson, and both were incomplete. While Saquon Barkley looks great, uh, uh, Kenny Galladay does not. He doesn't create separation. At this point, it just doesn't seem to me that he really cares all that much. He's always jogging off the line of scrimmage. Or maybe he's just that slow. I know he doesn't stretch before practices. Maybe that's the problem. But the Giants, they miss having a dog at wide receiver. You know that one guy, I think he wore number 13, had the, uh, the yellow hair and like a mohawk or something and like proposed the kicking nets? Yeah, we miss that guy on the outside. But let's bring it back to Saquon. If, and that's a big if, if Saquon stays healthy, he's going to have a big year. This team, the idea was for them to be a spread offense and throw the football, get the ball out quick, playmakers in space on the outside. But so far through camp, that hasn't worked out. But they've been able to run the football and run the football very effectively. Saquon could get back to what he did in his rookie and sophomore season in the NFL where he was one of the best, if not the best and most talented running back in the NFL. 261 carries his rookie year, 1,300 yards, 5 yards a pop, 11 TDs, 90 grabs. He was great. He was great in 2019 as well. Over 1,000 rushing yards in 13 games and 6 touchdowns. I think with Evan Neal, Andrew Thomas, John Feliciano, and Mark Lewinsky headlining the Giants' offensive line, they could be one of the better rushing attacks in the NFL. So let's set the bar at 10 touchdowns for Saquon Barkley. Play a little game. Predict it for me. Over or under? 10 TDs for Saquon. Type O for over. Type U for under. I'm curious where all the Giants fans stand on this one. Off the top of the show, we told you guys, everybody that follows me on Twitter from today's show, I'll give you a follow back. So if you haven't yet, go do it right now at Marshall Green underscore.